So, um, I was thinking I would sort of add a section at the beginning of the show for news about comics and movies and other stuff, so let's get this shindig started. Holy f***, what is that? Okay, I have not seen Suicide Squad, see the last video on this channel for more about that, that was a shameless plug, but yeah, that looks really dumb, is that a homemade Batman costume from the Joker, or what's going on there? A Batman virtual reality trailer came out. That's cool. The Rogue One trailer came out. That looks good. I like Alan Tudyk. A black suit Superman picture was tweeted by Henry Cavill. Okay. Suicide Squad will be at the top of the box office for the third week in a row. I hope that means it's good, but I haven't seen it yet. See my last video for more on that. A shameless plug is now complete. Hey, Shaku is going to be in Spider-Man Homecoming. Great. Misty Knight is going to be in Luke Cage. Awesome. However, I hope she does get to be mainly in the Iron Fist TV show because, well, they have a cool relationship in the comics. So this week, getting into the main topic, Batman the Animated Series. God, I love this show. It's great, awesome, other cool adjectives to describe how spectacular it is. I'm going to talk about why it's great, some of the villains, the heroes, the characterization of Batman, but... Before I get into all that stuff, I want to go into a little bit of history, so let's go. The year was 1992. Batman Returns had just come out and had less than favorable reviews, especially with parents, so WB wanted a hit franchise. Well, it was in production to come out at about the same time as the movie. But anyway, the series was mainly produced by Bruce Timm. If that name sounds familiar, he had a large hand in the creation of the Justice League and Superman cartoons. The series debuted on September 5th, 1992, several months after Batman Returns, which came out in June of that year. The first episode on Leather Wings came out at exactly 4.30 on Fox Kids. It continued to come out every weekday at that time. After 65 episodes, the series was syndicated and moved solely to Saturday morning. The show took visual preferences from Tim Burton's Batman and was influenced by the 1940s Superman cartoon. It was dark, realistic, and still hopeful and optimistic about Gotham. The show was very faithful to the comics and goes into detail about the Batman universe. It started out with an already established Batman and... Dick Grayson as Robin, however, his costume was more of a Tim Drake style suit. It had pants. The series did make some changes to the comic, however, it changed up Mr. Freeze's origin, making him a much more sympathetic character. You may want to see the episode Heart of Ice, which goes into detail about his origin. Speaking of things that changed and invented, Harley Quinn, the Joker's colorful sidekick, who can be seen in Suicide Squad, which I haven't seen. See my previous video about that, shameless plug, is now inserted for the third time. Now that you know a bit about the show, I'd like to go into what I like about the series. I really like the series for a multitude of reasons, but I think it mainly stressed in the following. First of all, it's incredibly dark, yet still kid-friendly. I mean, it is a kid show, and Batman doesn't kill, but his villains certainly do. Though a gun is only used to shoot someone once, Commissioner Gordon, the villains do give the impression that they're very dangerous. The characters of the show are complex. Not only Batman, who's dark but still functionally human for once, but also some of the villains. As previously stated, Mr. Freeze is particularly complex and has quite a tragic backstory. On the subject of villains, Batman actually does try to talk to them and help them instead of just beating them up. Another reason I think it's so good, and love it so much, is it uses Batman's extended cast to the fullest. Not just Robin, Nightwing, Batgirl, Commissioner Gordon, Bullock, Tim Drake, and the Grey Ghost, but also characters such as Clock King, villains who do not only appear once but multiple times. The show created complex characters, such as Harley Quinn, who I recommend you check out the origin story for, Mad Love, it's a very amazing episode and comic book, but also other villains, such as Baby Doll, a psychotic ex-actress who has a growth condition that makes her look like a small child, and that's handled surprisingly well for a children's television series. The series had just the right amount of villains to make it seem fresh with every episode, and still have it feel good when an old villain shows up. The universe felt real and lived in, Things progressed in it. 
It, f it introduced Robin and Batgirl in the first season, and throughout the series, Dick Grayson became Nightwing, Batgirl and Batman got new costumes, and a new Robin appeared, Tim Drake, who showed some of the characteristics of Jason Todd, who actually never appeared in the show. Though throughout every good thing in the show, I think the best thing about it is its characterization of Batman. In the show, Batman's dark and grim, yet still functionally human. He misses his parents and hates criminals because of this, but he still jokes with Alfred, which is something we actually haven't seen in many other characterizations of the character. In the show, Batman still works out his problems. He actually goes and talks to a therapist who knows his secret identity, Leslie Tompkins. He doesn't even do that in Gotham, where there is a Dr. Leslie Tompkins, who has met Bruce Wayne, and has psychoanalyzed other characters. This characterization of Batman is a nice guy, not only as Batman, but as Bruce Wayne as well, which actually filtered into the comics. At the time the series came out, though, most characterizations of Bruce Wayne were dicks, flamboyant, drunk playboys. But in the show, Bruce Wayne does good as well, donating to charities and hosting events for the community. He is a good person. This actually is a lot like Scott Snyder's run of Batman, who also donates to charities and wants to rebuild Gotham. As previously mentioned, Batman actually tries to talk with his villains, not just beat them up. He doesn't want to hurt them if he doesn't have to. He's soft on characters who are less evil, such as Harley Quinn, Two-Face, and Clayface. He's even fine with Penguin running a nightclub, as long as he keeps it legal and hopefully legit. This Batman actually is a nice guy, just doing his best in a bad situation, and honestly, I think that's the most comic-accurate Batman to appear in television or movies. However, Ben Affleck is a close second. Though Batman the Animated Series is a great show, it only had four seasons, so there is a limited amount. However, there are a multitude of other shows and comics occurring in that universe, such as Superman the Animated Series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Batman Beyond, The New Batman Adventures, Zeta Project, Static Shock, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, Batman The Dark Knight's First Night, Chase Me, Batman Beyond, Gotham Girls, Lobo, Batman Mr. Freeze, Sub-Zero, Batman Mystery of the Bat One, Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, and many... Many more comics that I will not be able to name in this. Also, I should mention that the Arkham games could take place in the same universe, seeing that the characters are in similar places and a lot of the voice actors remain the same. Finally, I want to recommend some of the episodes of Batman the Animated Series that I particularly enjoyed. Note that other channels on YouTube have made other videos about great episodes of Batman the Animated Series, however, this is my personal take on it, so it's a bit different. Bear with me, would ya? Two-Face parts 1 and 2 are good. They detail Harvey Dent's transformation into Two-Face. Also, The Dark Knight's First Night is a two-minute short, which is very good. It was provided by Bruce Tim to the Warner Brothers executives as a pitch for the show. POV is about a couple of police officers relating a shared experience with Batman to Commissioner Gordon. Heart of Ice is about the touching origin of Mr. Freeze. Beware the Grey Ghost is about Batman teaming up with his TV star childhood idol, the Grey Ghost, as voiced by Adam West, who is uh, second Batman and played Batman in Batman 1966. Robin's Reckoning, in which Robin tracks down the man who killed his parents, is an episode which is also very good. Almost Got Him is the final episode I'm going to mention in this list, in which a bunch of supervillains play cards and just interact. It's great. So now you know a bit about Batman the Animated Series, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, maybe you could like and comment down below. That would be cool. And if you want, leave a comment either about your favorite Batman the Animated Series episode or about why you like the show. This is FGI, also known as Freeze Gun Incorporated, signing off.